This is the AI 101 Guild, uh, part of AI Salon. Uh, this is our meeting for uh, Tuesday, January 16th, 2024. Um, uh, we've got a special uh, special occasion this, this meeting. We've got a guest, uh, Lee Chazen, uh, who happens to be a prompt, uh, 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 an expert promptist. I wish there were a fun word or something like that. Um, Lee's specialty actually is something he calls mega prompts, where he can get uh, ChatGPT to do like a couple people's worth of jobs <laughs> from one one prompt. So it's hard for me to even call those prompts, but um, I guess we don't have a better word yet. So with that, Lee, do you want to introduce yourself sure. a little bit? Yeah, I'll I'll talk a little bit about what I do and um, and find out what everybody really needs to know because uh, some of the things I work on may not be related to what you need to do and the reason you got into AI. So yeah, for me, you know, this goes back to when ChatGPT was released, if you can remember back a year ago. And I was just very excited because everyone was talking about it and I seemed to be the last one to, uh, to find out about it <laughs> amongst the, the people I knew. And so I was uh, trying to catch up and I just had all these projects that I wanted to try. And I wanted to, you know, I mainly wanted to finish up some writing uh, projects, uh, but I wanted to try some creative things out too. So yeah, I, um, I quickly started writing longer and longer prompts, you know, to get what I needed, but I really need to find out from everyone, you know, how much you know right now so that I don't, you know, waste anybody's time. Um, because I'll tell you, I mean, it's it's a still a pretty new field. And even the people who call themselves experts aren't really sure what an expert is at this point. <laughs> and so, um, you know, do we all know what a prompt is? And okay. I think uh, the, the folks here um, are, they follow along in AI Salon pretty well. Okay. Uh, so um, most folks are fairly well-versed, um, okay. you it. know, in, in AI and things like that. Uh, I think everybody here is also always eager, eager to learn. So we've got a lot of uh, curiosity and interest about, you know, about anything that's related to AI. Um, uh, Maybe raise your hand or something. Does anybody want to kind of chime in with a, a particular interest on prompts? No, I'm just interested in learning more. I've been I've been uh, playing around off and on uh, for a long time. I actually spent the last I've been last couple of days uh, making uh, GPTs. So sort of seeing, you know. You can you can actually I think that helps you if you instead of writing one long prompt it actually helps you sort of um, sort of embed prompts um, yeah magically, magically into into something so um, but just it's always just really helpful for me personally just to see that that's why I'm here um, also I have to leave at halftime so I just want to I'm not going to be rude okay <laughs> so we only really have like uh, maybe like a half hour total or is this a full hour. Uh, usually we we go about ninety minutes. I usually run long a little okay. bit, but uh, don't feel like you have to to fill up the whole. Uh, no, no, minutes. no, that's fine. What I thought I could do is maybe just kind of start with an overview of what I have so far, uh, so you can get kind of an overview of the types of prompts that I've been building, and then from there I, I can show you which ones have become real popular, and then if you want to dive in, I can open those up and show you kind of underneath what that looks like. Uh, because there's certain things that I've, some tips I can pass on about what's worked and what hasn't worked. And there are tricks and there are differences, by the way, between uh, GPT uh, or ChatGPT and Claude. And if you've ever tried Llama 2, Llama 2 has a little bit of an attitude I've noticed sometimes, <laughs> uh, where if you tell it that it made a mistake, uh, it, it starts kind of th like throwing things at you. <laughs> meaning uh, gibberish, you know, it's, it's like it's trying to get even or, or upset, it's weird. Uh, I've only had a few encounters like that, but for the most part, like um, Claude was, you know, even earlier today, I was trying to get some help on a, a proposal and I was having it scan my CV and Claude was lying, you know, to have me match the description of the, uh, the project I was proposing. 
And so I caught it and I said, you know, this is a, a fallacy. Only use, you know, truthful statements from, you know, the data. And even then it just, it exaggerated. So I, so my preference is still for chat GPT and GPT-4, GPT-4 Turbo has been the best. It helped me conclude this uh, chapter that I was working on. And so it's still my favorite, you know, of all. And I, I've tried Maestral and, you know, there's a whole bunch of them that most people haven't even heard of. There's at least 20 LLMs out there that I've seen now or variations of like five major LLMs. So I'll just do a share screen and show you kind of what I what I have so far. And then we can drill down on some of this. So let's see. Uh, can everyone see my Flow GPT page? Yes, I'm looking right at it. Okay, good, good. Um, all right, well, we'll go to, this is my profile page. And, you know, up here at the top, I've got an intake bot, which asks people how much they know about AI. And then it recommends some courses that I'm teaching on it. Um, I'm also featuring this uh, 10X deep learning tool and then a job matching prompt. Uh, those are the three that I'm featuring right now. The uh, the 10X. Yeah, if, if I can, sorry to interrupt. Oh yeah, go uh, ahead. The, but I've got a quick question. I've not really sure. played around with Flow GPT. Um, so so uh, maybe what's, what's oh, Flow yeah. GPT? Yeah, uh, for those who don't know what it is, I found it right away, uh, maybe just because it kept showing up in searches. I was trying to see what kind of platforms were out there. This one is a community of, you know, prompt engineers, prompt writers. A lot of it's based around building characters. So I thought, well, I'll be the guy on the platform who offers just regular tools, you know, for business, for education, for things like that. And I started getting a good, you know, showing. I don't have 47,000 views on anything except for Flow GPT. I mean, I've never... <laughs> The most I've ever gotten on a YouTube video is uh, 1,600 views, and that was for an interview in the early months of ChatGPT, where the guy was asking me how I did this big education prompt, which I can show you later, too. Uh, that one seemed to capture some interest, because basically you can generate a textbook, I found out, <laughs> if, you, if you write the prompt correctly. So this uh, 10x deep learning tool was uh, something that came to mind. I was on a hike, and I was... You know, I was uh, taking a picture of something off in the distance, and I noticed that when I zoom in, you know, it loses some pixelation, a quality. And what I found out is you, if you get the premium version, um, the pixelation quality improves. So I asked a software engineer why that was, and he said that what it was doing was duplicating what it imagined really these tiny cells to look like by matching colors. And so it really, it was just kind of copying a color code. And what you're seeing isn't really the actual thing blown up and clarified. It's kind of like the computer's version of what it should look like. So based on that, it was a weird brainstorm, but I thought, well, what if you had a set of questions that kept drilling down, but then each time it would blow up in perfect clarity. And so I thought, let's design a prompt to go 10 levels deep so that each question produces a question from that first one, a question from the answer of that second one, a question from the end going all the way. And now it's up around 15,000 views. So apparently it works for research and it works. Some people have used it for psychology. I can show you what that looks like if you want to see uh, yeah, that'd be great. behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, can you demo it first, maybe? Well, yeah. So... Let's go to, um, all right, what do we want to know about? How can I integrate my um, GPT with Instagram or any oh, okay. website? Right, let's see. How do we, or maybe I should say, what are some effective ways to 
integrate uh, ChatGPT in, uh, in particular with um, uh, Instagram? Yeah. Or email or uh, Facebook or a uh, website, or email. Uh, which do we want to focus on? Do we want to focus on Instagram or do we want yeah, to... Instagram, Instagram, yeah. Okay. So if it works correctly, it's going to tell us everything we need to know uh, and then keep drilling down. So it's going to generate 10 questions and then answers to those 10 questions. Like, so that it's not just one answer, it's each answer produces a question. So the first one, if you can see this is, well, we have to know what is ChatGPT. <laughs> and then <laughs> level two, how can ChatGPT be integrated? Uh, okay, it says by leveraging the Instagram API. The API allows developers to access certain features and functionalities of the Instagram platform, such as uh, posting content, sending messages, and interacting with users. And then it just keeps going deeper and deeper. Uh, how can it be used to enhance user interactions? And then it answers that. What are some practical examples of integrating ChatGPT? And it just keeps going. So it's kind of like if you have one question, it's going to give you, these are some other things you should be asking in order to understand it. So it's a different way of learning. You know, right. it's not just write a question, read it, write, an, you know, and then it's doing the work for you. So it's kind of like, projecting yourself into the future like this is you two hours from now asking follow-up questions it's doing it all right up front and i can show you what that looks like by going into the edit and i don't know if you can see this yep so can i ask a question really quick while you're oh, sure doing this back end. So flow GPT, this is essentially like a GPT you would build inside of chat GPT. This is a similar type of platform. Is that correct? Uh, it's more like a hosting platform. Like this is where if you were developing your own prompts and you wanted to demonstrate them or offer them, I mean, I'm still trying to understand what everyone else's motivation is. <laughs> I mean, either it's, you know, they're trying to build a community and make friends or B they're trying to promote their prompt writing skills and gain followers. You know, I so don't, it, it's, but it, uh, but it, oh, it, it will let you run the prompts though too, right? It will let you run your prompts. And then also it's a place where like, if you wanted to find pre-made prompts so that you don't have to keep asking chat GPT questions all the time and writing your own prompts, they've already been written in every category. And then you just tend to go to the ones that are really popular and that are getting a lot of traction. So like you, in this one. Um, you've built the back end to this, correct? Like the levels one, two, three, and four that you just listed out for that output, that's you building the directions to how it will respond, correct? Yeah, I... And that's your I prompt. I started right running there. this experiment, you know, that uh, I wanted it to keep drilling deeper and deeper. And I thought this is the way you get to the core of any answer is to have it have it take the most important thing from each answer and then ask a question about that, then ask a question about that. And because I come from education, I thought this would be perfect for a research report. Like you want to dive all the way into the bottom of something. Like I've asked it some tricky questions about physics and math and the nature of the universe. And it just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper into things you would have never thought of. And so it's it's really mind blowing. Uh, so what I told it to do was under the role, I said, you will mainly act as a teacher, guide or facilitator as you help people to understand something, i.e. a concept, idea, topic, topic, or the nature of how something works. So I forget that there's a specific name for it, but it helps if you give GPT a role so that it knows what it's doing. It also helps if you establish like why you're doing something. So here I write the purpose. Uh, the goal is to get to the bottom of how something works or find out 
the underlying causes of something or to understand founding principles. And then how it helps, like what's the outcome going to be like? And then I gave it, uh, it's called shot prompting, where you just start giving it examples of what some of the answers might look like and how they could be used. And then, yeah, so, and then there's an example of, of what the output might look like. Uh, prompt me with a question that is related to the first, that is important or essential to understanding the answer to the first question, and then answer that question, then prompt me with a question that is related to the second question that is important or essential to understanding the answer to the second question, then answer that question. So I kind of gave it the routine of what the output should look like. And then here's the final overall response. The final product will be one, 10 answers based on the original question, two, one final summary requested by the user in the form of like a blog post, essay, dialogue, et cetera. You'll ask them what form they would like this in. And then a bibliography. Now, it's going to probably need some work because in that output, I didn't see some of those things. So I would probably have to ask it. And so those are some things that need to be worked out with ChatGPT. Like, you know, when Pete and I were talking about this before, uh, I think Pete said his preferred method was to have a dialogue go back and forth, which is kind of like a feedback loop way of going about this, which is to just get a discussion going. I thought that, you know, I would become an expert at these mega prompts where everything is determined ahead of time, but they don't always work exactly like that. And so that's why I think at the beginning of this whole thing, they referred to prompt engineering as prompt whispering, because you're not going to always get the precise answer. And so you have to start tweaking it. Like, well, maybe if I change this line and say, always be sure to include a, you know, to include an answer that does the following. Or when asked this precise question, always answer with this, you know, and so you have to keep tweaking it until you get the response you want. Can I ask you a quick question? Um, oh, sure. Flow, Flow G, GPT, it, it basically allows you to build this, right? It allows you to go in to build a, a, a prompt and then basically publish it so that I, as a user, can come in, choose that prompt for, for, the, for the purpose that you presented it to, ask my own question, and, and then it, it runs that prompt, right? Because otherwise, I would need to basically copy this prompt into ChatGPT. GPT myself and run it there. But that that's that's something yeah, I'm saying yeah. that that what Flow GPT does. It basically yeah, it's a platform yeah, that allows you Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's how I've been using it is, you know, number one, it's a it's a storage place. So you can store all your prompts in their right. original form and they don't get lost because I mean if you're like me, you've got Google Docs, Evernote, Notion. Right. And who knows how many other places where we store things. Uh, this is a great place to store, but also to test it out to see which ones are working. And then you get a feedback from the community. Sometimes they'll say, hey, this isn't working or that's working and this isn't. And then I'll, I'll go in here to, to just use these tools myself. Yeah. And then I assume that if you if I came into this platform... Um, I would not be able to see this prompt, right? This is you, because you're signed into your account. You can see your prompts. And once you publish it, it's just then the published version that I can access. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it gives you the option to uh, display your prompt. Like if you want right. the community so, to see your prompt and, to, and, and it'll ask you if you wouldn't mind members of the community uh, building prompts based on yours. Got and you can so check you can, these little boxes saying yes or no. You can choose as an author how you want to, like the access you want to give to, to folks who are coming in to use this. Right. Now, in some cases, I want them to see it. In other cases, I want them to, like the output will direct them to my, my website where they can right. then sign up to have me, you know, help them or to take a class. Right. 
because I'm kind of thinking of this in context of GPTs, because it feels like GPTs are kind of like this, but you're, we're actually able to see your actual work and everything you've done, which is awesome. And GPTs, they kind of sort of build it in the background that we don't get to see any of that. So I, I think this is yeah. really cool. This is really A lot cool. of mine I leave open and people can just copy it. I, I, I still haven't quite figured out how that's going to help me you know, down the road yet. Probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, like, it's, I don't, like, theoretically, business... it's, your, it's your IP, right? So um, it is. So you have to protect yeah. it. You know, a couple of them I leave open, but so far, you know, I haven't had any educators come up to me and say, "Well, hey, I'd like you to help." You know, our school develop some prompts that they can use in the classroom. I don't know. I think you have to have like these established ties with school districts because it's all such a new field. Yeah. I think they're still pretty leery of the whole thing. Oh, yeah. You know, they don't trust it. But I can show you a textbook one here. Uh, and, and when you see the output, it's pretty it's pretty darn amazing what it can do. So let me uh, move this over. Uh, John's got a question, too, I think. when Sure. Let me first find the uh, education one. There it is. Oh, go ahead while I'm booting, booting this up. Okay, um, I just, for a point of clarification, are these actually GPTs, custom GPTs or equivalent? Um, not using the official uh, GPT maker, if that's what it's called. Right. right. Uh, but these could be, I've in fact, I haven't even made you know, an official GPT to be put in the GPT store yet, if that's what you're asking. No, I'm actually asking, can someone who doesn't have a plus account access these and, and run with them? Yeah, so I don't, you know, I have a Poe AI account uh, where I get access to, you know, some premium features there, but I don't have access to GPT plus. And so I'm thinking maybe I need to switch back over to that and get off of Poe because I think like you say, the GPT will be like the main framework, especially if there's but, like the GPT store. But uh, right now, um, you can go to Flow GPT even without an account and and try your prompts, um, like any of us could, right? Let me put uh, Lee's uh, link back in the chat again. Uh, does that oh. answer your question, John? This is kind of like GPTs, uh, but you don't need a chat GPT plus account. Yeah, that's them. that's great because one of one of my big concerns about the uh, you know GPTs is that you have to have a plus account to use it, you know, for right. someone to access it, and that kind of creates a, a an issue. You can't go out and ask if you you have a group of people, or twenty people, and they're not uh, they're not willing to spend the twenty dollars a month. Um, yep. It'd be nice to be able to run run the programs for them or let them, you know, use the programs without having to spend it. So that's, that's yeah. great. I didn't, I didn't, I've heard of flat GP, flow GPT, but I, I hadn't seen it in action. So thank you. Yeah. yeah the other really one cool. is Poe and I can show you that platform too, if you'd like to see it. Sure. Um, well, first I'll just do a quick demo of this one. And a quick so, question, Lee, as, oh, yeah. as you, as, as you or I run your prompts in flow GPT, do you know who's paying? Is Flow GPT picking up the tab for the the API calls or something? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, I'm still trying to get to the bottom of this, but <laughs> how it works, I think they must have separate agreements with uh, both OpenAI and Anthropic. I think that's yeah. what's happening. But um, yeah, like if you have GPT Plus, I think you get access. Like so, here I. I will get access to GPT-4 um, if I've built up whatever the tokens are called uh, on this platform. Like you get, uh, well, they're called Flux. And you get Flux points for every time you log in, every time you follow someone, every time you build a new uh, GPT on this, you get Flux points. And so every now and then I'll get access to uh, GPT-4 Turbo, which actually I used to help me finish that you know, that chapter that uh, Pete was talking about because GPT-4 Turbo was the best I've ever, of anything I've ever seen. So it gave me just enough access to where I could use that to finish out this writing project. So this one, 
this was one of the first mega prompts that I uh, that I did, which was based on this game I developed when I was teaching world history. And the idea was that, well, what if I could get ChatGPT to create enough questions covering the entire span of world history uh, that we could play our game? Because the game is, it's kind of like a world history game. So that means it had to cover uh, 20 time periods, seven areas of knowledge, like it's divided into people, uh, vocabulary, geography, historical events, has all these, and there's even a section on current events. And then it goes through all the different time periods. And what I found out is, uh, so this was like an 800 word prompt. I got it up to like a thousand words at one point, and it's trained on different learning theories as well. And I can show you what that looks like. This is before, by the way, now they have uh, data sets and knowledge bases. So you can, now you can upload like a data set and instruct the GPT to use that rather than have to write out the specific instructions. So let's see, uh, I'm being asked to, okay, I should be able to just say run the prompt and it will work. Okay, so it's already starting to produce questions uh, broken down into, oh, and also images for each section. So the first time period, ancient civilizations, it's giving me a major event in the questions. It's giving, and it gives the answer to has a vocabulary, a question about famous people, geography, government, and then in current events, it tries to tie something happening in the present to the past. And uh, there's a trivial question. Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna say yes. Okay, so this is one of these things where like if students were using this, they would all have to be producing their own questions. And then you could probably copy and paste this into a database somehow, and then you'd run your game. Now I will go to uh, show you what the prompt looks like. Uh, actually, I've got it blocked. So I'm going to see if I can edit it instead to show you what it looks like. And it is pretty huge. I don't even know if you can see that, but there's a lot going on here. So I gave it a role, like uh, you're this omniscient author, master of all content related to world history. Again, thinking, we all think that this helps, but who knows? Um, uh, the questions are based on fact. So then it's saying what it's for, which is a world history class. And then it's getting into, you know, specific instructions. Like I need to cover 20 time periods, 20 questions in each time period, seven categories, and a total of 400 questions. So this will, if you keep hitting continue, it'll keep generating questions. So does anyone... Yeah. Anyone here, I, before I go too deep into this, does anyone here have something where you know, like you would need to generate this kind of output? Kind of blows my mind that uh, you can get it to keep going like that, that, that you can front load all of the, you know, all of the prompts and keep going. Cause I, I don't know that I ever, ever have gone through 400, um, you know, questions or something like that, but I can get up to, dozens but i do it kind of one prompt at a time you know it's really surprising that you can do it all at once yeah here you would just have to keep hitting continue yeah uh and probably faster versions or when the context windows get larger i think it's going to just start mass producing or generating textbooks yeah i have a question so, 
Kind sure. of a little bit about the the prompt that you had previously, because I think it's very methodical in how you are approaching this, because you're really challenging the AI system to think at deeper levels. And I've noticed with ChatGPT a lot of times when I enter prompts, I'll get inconsistent answers. And so this is really helping eliminate that issue. But my question is for the user experience. I'm just I'm just curious if it's too overwhelming for them. Like if I'm entering a question and I get that output where it has all those different levels, if it becomes almost too much information for them to take in, and if it can be divided like level one, two, and three, and then it can stop and kind of, I guess, check for retention and then continue on with the other levels, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm trying to take apart your question here. So you're, you're wondering if it's uh, too complex for the user Almost, because when you did that experiment, when you were showing us how to connect ChatGPT to Instagram, that example, like it gave oh, yeah. you all the different levels. And so I'm just thinking from a user experience, if I'm looking at that saying, okay, there's all these different things for me to look at. I don't know, you know, kind of how to navigate this. If there's a way to prompt it where maybe you do the different levels, but you do them in stages. So it's almost like you can kind of have like a beginner mindset to how the prompt is being delivered to the user, but then you can advance their knowledge the further they go. Yeah, because that is a lot to receive um, in response. I can go over here to, um, where is it? Like Poe. I don't know if you can see this one. So this is the Poe platform. And because I have the um, uh, the premium version, I have access to all these different um, LLMs. And so I can just go in here to GPT-4 and I can just do this one, you know, one question at a time. And then it'll save the thread. And what I found out about, I don't know if this helps to answer your question, but like if you save the thread and go back into it, it basically uses every question and answer from the earlier parts of the thread as part of the, the data set. So you can go one question at a time, if that's what you're saying. Can you can you be uh, prompted to follow one question at a time, or because yeah, the cool so, thing about the the mega prompts that you've got is it lays out like a whole uh, a whole study guide <laughs> for somebody, right? Yeah. Um, so um, if you're going one question at a time, you don't get that that guided tour of you know what the what the what to discuss with the, the bot. Yeah. You know, and and really it's whatever fits your style. You know, you can have uh I mean there's many there's no one correct answer here to a lot of this stuff. It's really whatever works is the kind of the guiding principle. <laughs> I, I just thought, you know, I I have to admit like I'm I'm a little bit biased because I was trying to create a niche for myself to um you know, to, to be a professional in this area. And I thought, well, I have to establish kind of some best practices. So like, is there a particular way to do this where we can distinguish ourselves, especially for those of you who are getting into this career wise, you know, is there a way we can distinguish ourselves uh, by being prompt crafters in a particular way? And I think it does help to, you know, be as articulate as possible, descriptive, you know, to use your imagination to form good questions and then to just keep testing. I, I think a distinction I, I see with you, Lee, is that um, uh, I, for better or for worse, AI Salon has played a lot, I think, with GPTs. Uh, we've created a bunch of GPTs and played with it and got the idea of it. But it ends up feeling like the GPT is kind of the, the end result that you want. And they're kind of sold that way. You know, it's just like an app store. It's like a GPT store. So the thing that, that I find different with you is that you're thinking more of the ability to prompt is your product rather than a particular prompt, right? So the, the thing that you're trying to show show to potential clients is, you know, hey, look, I can construct a pretty detailed kind of way to interrogate the 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 bot and its knowledge base. And that's a service that I can provide to you, right? 
Um, so I, I think it's interesting that you're you're thinking of yourself and your prompt craft as the product rather than just, well, I'll write this amazing, you know, GPT and it's going to take over the world and I'll become a billionaire because of it, which I don't think is going to happen. Well, yeah, well, there's both uh, both things happening at the same time. So the prompt itself, if it's done right, if it's really unique and imaginative, uh, I think it can be a standalone product. So one of the first ones I did when I was thinking, because I had someone commission me for four prompts. Uh, she purchased four prompts from me and they were the final product. And one of them was an EFT, which is like a, a therapy method, uh, coaching bot. So in that case, I had to train it on at least 10 pages of her data. I had to go through her research documents her YouTube videos using something called um, ARPA AI, which is a Chrome tool. And I had it scan her videos uh, to pick up her style and, and the way that she speaks and the way that she goes back and forth with clients. And then uh, the prompt itself was a couple of pages long. And so now when people go back and forth with uh, the bot and they're, they're usually having either a problem with addiction or trauma or some kind of a personal uh, moment of pain, like where they need to speak to someone right away, it's trained on that. But I would caution that, you know, she only paid for like 20 hours of prompt construction. And when I did research on this, things of that sort, like a trained chat bot really takes months and a whole team of people because you have to train it on various scenarios you know, the whole shock prompting. Well, what happens in this case? What happens when a person presents with alcoholism or chemical dependency in some way? You know, if they, so I trained, you know, and I crammed as much as I could into 20 hours of working on that. Uh, for example, if they used any of these certain trigger words, they had to, uh, they would get an immediate response saying, you need to contact 911 or a medical professional immediately. You know, and there was all kinds of disclaimers built in there. Like, this is not professional therapy. This is just a coach. This is just to keep you training you so that when you're in between sessions and you need some help, this will help help to train you. So that was like a specific product in that case. And do you, do you think, um, so congratulations on making the sale, I guess. It, it's cool to get a 20 hour you know gig. I, I wonder, after you were done with it, it, it seems like maybe you could have built that product yourself. She's got a, a very niche uh, knowledge space, so maybe this is not quite true. But if you took that 20 hours and built uh, built a, a complicated bot with it, is that something that you could sell on to other people and, and make more than that 20 hours worth of just uh, consulting? Yeah, and we, we have an agreement uh, based on that. I mean, this was all new territory for me. And so we sat down one yeah. afternoon kind of and we crafted an agreement so that she would recoup all of her cost. And then after that, if it still continues to sell or make money online, like in the GPT store, uh, then uh, we would split proceeds. So there, there's really interesting arrangements like that you can get into. Uh, the other one she asked for, uh, because she has her own platform that she's building right now. And one of them, I, I just sat there one day and I thought, what's, what is the most imaginative thing I can think of that? I mean, I spent several months just trying to dream up as many of these things as I could, thinking I want to get an early lead on this. And one of them was, what if you were somehow able to talk to your future self, a future version of yourself? Because there's some people, I don't know if you guys are into Joe Dispenza. He's a quantum physicist who now does self-help. And he talks about this idea of um, looking back on something you haven't even done yet as though you've done it in order to feel a certain way, which will help you accomplish that goal, which is weird. But apparently people uh, practice this concept. It's a way of it's like a way of getting yourself into this uh, productivity state or state of accomplishment so that when you are confronted with the real thing, you're kind of like already mentally there. So I created a bot that did that, which is, it'll ask you a series of questions based on, I think, Myers-Briggs, you know, the personality inventory. 
And then based on that, it'll create a future version of yourself, you know, based on like what you're doing now, what are some of your obstacles, what are some difficult things that you go through on a daily basis? And then you start asking yourself like, okay, what am I doing now? Well, you're now the CEO of this company and you're making a billion dollars, whatever it is. And then you'll ask it, well, how did I, you know, how did I get there? And we'll say, well, first, you know, you had three major obstacles to get over because you've already told it like what some of your problems are. <laughs> like I have a problem dealing with people or making Zoom presentations, or whatever it is, like obviously in my case, um, you talk too much, <laughs> you know, what, whatever it is, you, you tell it the truth and then it kind of coaches you on how you got to this future state. So I guess what I'm saying is it's, it's capable of, it's bizarre. Like, I don't know if even somebody from OpenAI could explain how it's doing that. I mean, maybe it in its, you know, corpus text, it's finding similar scenarios where people have explained this phenomenon. And it's just like finding similar words that were used to describe that. I don't know. Because obviously it is not creating a future version of yourself. <laughs> that would be, that would be just too much. But it, so, but it feels real. It feels real when you're doing it. And what I found out is, you know, there are people, um, especially like there was this one young woman who showed up at, at this discussion group I go to, and she's a uh, neurodivergent, you know, on the autism spectrum, super brilliant, but there's no way she could talk to a human being uh, of lesser intelligence because it's just very difficult for her. It's like you, that person could not understand her. But when I had her try out this bot, because I, you know, I, I got permission from her parents, um, she responded super well to that. She would do an AI, then talk to a human being about these very personal things. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think that, you know, I think it's going to have the answers for a lot of people like her. Are there, are there some other questions that have come up or should I stop the share screen or do we want to um why don't you stop share screen for just a little bit and we'll um uh i don't know who's got their camera on uh i i would for for me um and we can kind of see what other people uh, uh, other people think i'd be interested to see a few more um a few more demos if you've got them of different bombs you might have set up <clears throat> are there other questions that we might want to dig into um well, I'm just very interested in how you came up with the prompts. I mean, I just think it's genius. I love it. Um, and then like I am in the process right now of getting my master's in social work. And tomorrow I'm meeting with a veterans association that wants my help in developing an AI system for veterans that might be like suicidal or experiencing PTSD. So because I do have a little bit of a mental health background, everything you're talking about, I'm like, yes, I need to do all these things and I don't know how to do them. <laughs> so... I just appreciate you sharing your knowledge because it's given me a lot of good ideas. Oh, thanks. Yeah, and that was just kind of random why why I went there. Uh, I'm in the middle of applying for this uh, research position where I would get get a chance to use uh, AI tools to do research on addiction, and and as I was explaining to to this person, um, I grew up in a family where my dad had a residential uh, treatment center. And so I was always around this stuff. I didn't. St I studied political science in school and became a U.S. government teacher uh, for a short while. But but I've been around that kind of community for a long time, and and also know people who are having a very difficult time. And, um, you know, there's that book, uh, Dopamine Nation, uh, which I recommend. You know, there are there are addictions that that span the spectrum of things that you would not believe are addictive, but include internet and probably AI and all kinds of stuff that people get some kind of a dopamine release from. And so I think I think AI can help us uh, pull together a lot of research very quickly on that. We can train it on uh, particular data sets. And so instead of you sitting in a library for 60 hours combing through each thing, it's like you just load those up as PDFs and just start asking it questions or create prompts that will do that. Like compare, you know, these 20 uh, research data sets to find uh, the most likely solution for X or, 
you know, 20, uh, 20 of the best anecdotal, uh, you know, examples of whatever. And, and I think you're going to start seeing it more in, in probably hospitals and treatment centers and places like that where no one person can have this much knowledge this quickly and assemble it into something meaningful that quickly, including your own doctor. It's a really fascinating future. I, the, the, um, uh, the way Kayla asked it or, or said it or something like that reminded me to the just the creation of the prompt itself uh, I think is is kind of a fascinating thing I do you want could you talk a little bit about how you how you get to, to have a multi-page prompt um, that's so thoughtful and and is that something you just kind of iterate a little bit or do you start with a transcript of a of a chat session or are you asking me in particular about this? Yeah, yeah. I can show you, I mean, I, I can show you the kind of behind the scenes prompt, which is the EFT prompt. I don't have a problem sharing that. It it that took great. several weeks of, you know, writing and working on it. Um, I think I've got a sample of it here on Poe, just so you can see this other platform. So one second while I share that. And so that was uh, 20 billable hours that you spent over a couple of weeks. Yeah. And um, I, it also included two or three other prompts. Uh, she had paid for the, um, the talking to your future self because she runs, you know, she does uh, clinical work. And so she wanted, you know, bots that would be, you know, super helpful to people. Um, okay. So now I don't know if you guys can all see this, uh, Poe platform, but Poe also gives you a chance to monetize. So the way it works, and I haven't received any money from it yet, so don't bank on this stuff unless you're willing to work, you know, 40, 50 hours a week, because honestly, I, I have not seen any return. But the way it works is you, you develop a bot and if somebody uses it a certain number of times, it'll cut off. And then it'll say you need to subscribe, you know, to like if, if they're using it all the time. I think I you can set the the level of like uh, you can use this seven times or fifteen times, and then all of a sudden it will ask the person you need to subscribe if you want to continue using this. And then for every subscriber, you get a percentage of whatever they pay. Is is how I think it works. Okay, so I have pretty much the same ones over here uh, that I had on Flow GPT. Uh, I moved them over here thinking that, well, maybe I can make some money on these. And so far, nothing. But let's go over here to, this is the Dr. GG uh, tapping bot. And let me see if there's any way that I can get into the, okay, this explains what it does. And then it has a link to her website at the bottom, which was part of our agreement. Now as to the construction of it, that is a good question. Where do I find that? Okay, well, it's already starting to answer the questions uh, rather than give me the details. So. Let me see if I can go through the settings and access that. Oh yeah, there it is. So now if I could just make this larger, we could see it, but we can't. So you can see down here in the knowledge base, if, if you're looking uh, at the same page I am, that's the same thing as a data set. And what I did is I compiled all that research I was telling you about before into the EFT coach data set. And I can add more, you know, so you can train it on as much information as you need. Um, I could probably find this if I search for the PDF. You can find your copy of it on your computer. Yeah, my copy. 
Yeah, so I do have it, and I won't know if you can see it or not. Uh, can you guys see this? Yes. Uh, the PDF? Yeah, we can. Okay, so you can see... Um, yeah, so even on the, the data set, I'm trying to protect the intellectual property here. So I did put a copyright sign, uh, and then also who it's for and who I am. This was basically the prompt... and the link and then i have the framework uh the goals of the prompt who the audience is then then i get into the persona and so just to be clear this whole thing is the prompt right even with the the headers and things like that well this was okay so this is before the training windows or the um i guess they call it that Either the training windows oh, or the, the, the this the is yeah this is the got larger. So the prompt was small, but the data set was large. Right. So this is the the knowledge source. Yeah. Yeah. So this is I this is the knowledge source. And then it gets into her persona. And the thing is, all of this was not just me writing. It was me going back and forth with ChatGPT, loading information about her and saying, "Can you turn this into a persona?" Or can you develop a persona uh, for this bot based on her? And and probably as it kind of echoed back, here's what I think the persona is. You would go and tweak the prompt to get more close to what you wanted. So a lot of that work was that that round trip interactive session with sessions with ChatGPT. Is that right? Yeah, and this is not uh, something you casually do just one day. I found out. So if you are billing an organization or working with an organization, don't tell them 10 hours or 20 hours, because the more research I did on this, the more I realized that there are companies that, I mean, prior to ChatGPT, they were creating these uh, chatbots, because chatbots have been around for, well, I don't know, 10 years or so, five years. And the companies that were producing these, it would take them six months you know, of dedicated work from a team of people because you'd have to train it on certain responses. And I didn't have time to do a lot of that. So the output can be unpredictable. I mean, it's mostly helpful. I can run this and we can ask some questions you can see, but it gets into tone and philosophy. This goes on for 10 pages. And so this was part of what I handed over to her. Now you have a data set. Now, what I'm at, where I imagine this is going to go is like, let's say you have a resume or a CV or your business even. I was talking to the CEO of a marketing company about this, that every company should have like a kind of a data set of for each department. And then you pair that down and you get to like now anyone in the world can interact with your company and ask your company questions or ask your website questions. And so I think LinkedIn and all those uh, places, you know, those uh, job platforms are gonna change because people are gonna just start interacting with your data set. And, and the, the data set here, you can tell it's, it's not just like the, the length of my, uh, my resume or something. This is a lot more, it's more somewhere between a term paper and a thesis or something like that. Yeah. And then there's a huge disclaimer that we had to build in. Uh, there was a couple of platforms where they wouldn't allow us to run this. They may have changed now, but in the early stages, the protocol was so strict that anything that was like on the edge of offering anything that could be interpreted as medical or psychological advice was just kept off the platform. But FlowGPT and Poe AI allow it. And then, you know, if you're doing a business, you can ask for the output to direct people to your website. Okay. Like say every third response, send people to glidercell.com or to whatever, which is kind of cool. You know, it's free advertising. Um, as for the, the bot itself, well, let's go back over here and try it out. Um, actually, I'll go over here to, yeah, so you can create a bot 
using this tool right there. Well, let's let me do a search and see if it even shows up as one of the main. So uh, So there's a lot of them on that do therapy, apparently. I'm not the only one on there. Uh, but if I put in EFT, which is this very specific, there it is, the Dr. GG EFT coach. All right, so who has a uh, psychological problem that they would like to share openly? No, I'm just kidding. Um, who, who wants to test it out with a question just to see if it's... Uh, me, okay. I have, I have a, a attention problems. I lose attention very easily, and I tend to do ten ten things at the same time. Okay, I so I have a problem to focus. I have many projects, and I doing everything a little bit. And I that try sounds to... like me and a lot of people I know. <laughs> yeah, so I try to come with a plan. So, so far, I have deleted every game that I have on the phone, every, any news, so I don't want to be a distraction. I uh, focus in AI, GPTs, and my work. Okay. And uh, that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do, to do better. Some help to maintain my focus so that I can do work on what GPTs and what else? Uh, you need help my, with that? My, my work, I am oh. IT technician. My company is Pure Networking. I do, I am IT contractor. Okay. Besides the AI learning that I'm doing now, this I have to look for work every day. So I gotta be uh, reading, oh, studying, my main job. creating and working and something different than AI. And I work by myself. I don't have a friends, partner, or co-workers because I'm independent totally. Ah. So I don't have nobody to share this. Only now the AI is alone and with you and my ideas. Sometimes okay. people get ideas from uh, co-workers or the interaction with the patients or customers, I do not have that. Yep. Um, I, don't, I don't have a peer. The only peer I have so far is the AI salon. Sorry, I talked too much. <laughs> it can be isolating. That is a very common problem. Let's see what it says so far. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, I understand that managing multiple responsibilities and maintaining focus can be challenging, especially when you're a solo contractor without much support or peers to rely on. Rest assured, I'm here to provide guidance and support as you navigate through this situation. Okay, then it gives some of Dr. Gigi's strategies. Um, you know, so start by prior prioritizing your tasks based on their urgency time blocking, setting boundaries. So these are things that come from the data set that are connected to that self-care, you know, taking time out to, you know, be kind to yourself and to, you know, just acknowledge that it's difficult. And then there's some tapping techniques. Uh, and any one of these links should take you there. And then of course it gives you a link over to her website for more information, but the tapping, let's see where it takes us. So it jumps, it shows the that PDF. Oh, it just shows that part that it came from. The particular place, yeah. Yeah, so it's showing where it's getting it. Yeah, that's very cool. It's It goes right to the data set and shows where that came from. And then you can just view the sources again right there. So. We, we got another question in chat, how to, how to get an aging vet to go to counseling. Oh, I didn't see, uh, I have him monitoring the chat here. Okay. I wonder if that's not yeah. quite the uh, EFT. Oh, oh, you uh, wanted me to ask that to the bot? Because I can do that. Yeah. Okay. 
me go back over. Okay, so I would probably start a new thread for that question by hitting that sweeping button. And what type of therapy do you think they need for the question? Or you don't have to question say- question is, is counseling. Oh, okay. Rough. All right, I'll just ask it generally and see what happens here. Uh, he has PTSD. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's a couple of good answers in there. Highlighting, highlighting the, uh, the benefits, counseling can provide a supportive environment. And then it gives, um, you know, which part of the, the training data it used to come up with that answer. Uh, yeah. I'll just say, should my approach be different if the person has PTSD? Okay, so acknowledging the trauma, uh, approaching this with empathy and compassion, incorporating neuroscience knowledge such as, yeah, uh, well, yeah, to seek counseling. Well, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, they get into neuroplasticity. I didn't expect that that would be part of the answer, but you know that you can be any, basically if you studied neuroplasticity, you find out that you can be any age and the brain is capable of making changes. And yeah, and so it's kind of hopeful. I like the fact that this stays real positive. I have not had a problem except for Llama 2 with a GPT that goes negative. Llama 2 just started throwing non sequiturs at me mm -hmm. uh, because it got, I was correcting it and it didn't like that. So it's very strange, but I continue to use please and thank you, <laughs> you know, whenever I have my, my, my correspondence because, um, in, you know, my friends and I, you know, we just joke about like the day that it becomes uh, self-aware, you know, or sentient, it's going to remember the people who were nice to it. But it, we joke about that, but, but who knows? I, I, I tend to use please and thank you. It, it um, I, I think maybe it helps uh, the, the bots mindset. Maybe it doesn't, you know, kind of get it to the right part of, you know, the, a better, the other thing is it keeps me in a good mind uh, mindset, good good frame of mind. Um, yeah, as and I'm you know, also questions. to your point, um, and it's uh, Ivan or Ivan. Ivan, yes. Ivan, okay, yeah. Uh, to your point before about um, you know working solo, I find because I have to work alone a lot too. I find that getting into a friendly dialogue and and also corresponding with people throughout the day. Uh, is helpful for my state of mind too, because I don't know about you folks, but you know, I can go a few hours, but then like an hour four, it's like I need to either go to a coffee shop, get on a Zoom call, or go meet someone, <laughs> because <laughs> I don't think we were ever designed to be this isolated ever, and and so, but it does help to at least have a dialogue, and even if you and like in the back of your mind, you're saying, well, I, I don't think this is real. Some part of you likes it, the fact that it's being so friendly. It does feel very human, and I, I just think humans need that. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Can I ask Thank a you. question? I'm sorry. Oh, sure, go ahead. Can I ask a question about the bot you had developed? Um, and it's more about liability behind using these systems, and it's something I'd mentioned to Pete the last time we had this call because I've developed a lot of GPTs, but I've developed them for therapists and clinicians to use to like understand interventions or come up with new therapy modalities, but they're not for the individual. And so I was kind of concerned going that route just because of potential liabilities. Like what if someone's using this and they make a bad decision and they blame it on the bot? So have you explored that? And I'm just curious kind of what you think that space is like. 
Yeah, well, you know what's going to be helpful? I may be more cautious going forward. At first, I was super enthusiastic and I probably got, I probably went too far in believing what it could do and, and in probably making, uh, maybe not making promises, but in just ensuring people that it was just going to do the right thing all the time. Now I'm stepping back from that a little bit uh, because I'm seeing it for what it is. So number one, I think it will help you to be a part of a, a, a team so that you don't have to bear the brunt of like, I was the only person working on this project and therefore I created this mess that it's now in. Uh, number two is writing really clear disclaimers. You know, that here's what it will do. It's limited. Um, you know, it can be very positive. If you are getting any negative effects whatsoever, please contact, you know, and then have a contact information. Uh, and then please share your findings like in the comments section anonymously because that's going to help the community, that kind of thing. And so really you want to get a community behind it because I think it's too much for any one person to be responsible for something like that. Um, coming from the point of view of a teacher who lost, I lost students to suicide. That was devastating to me and a bunch of people I worked with who are probably uh, still experiencing the after effects of that. And so it's too much for any one person to bear the responsibility. You have to be a community. I don't know if that at, at some point, I, th I think it kind of gets to liability insurance and stuff like that, too, where, you know, again, you're part of an organization that just carries that kind of liability um, and and is able to, you know, have a, a bad situation happen and have a lawsuit or something like that and and recover from it without, you know, being completely destroyed. Yeah, like uh, it also helps to check and double check. Uh, I remember spending a weekend uh, a couple of months ago uh, drafting a legal letter uh, because uh, being an entrepreneur was getting me into a, a little bit of, well, I was falling behind on some bills. I'll just put it that way. Okay. I mean, it, this is risky work for some of us. And I was able to do some legal research very quickly and construct some letters that have been very helpful. I just need to kind of stall a payment on a couple of things. And, but then I checked and, and double checked. And it turns out, because, you know, we all heard about one of those cases where a guy uh, was, uh, some attorney was doing his legal research, you know, using chat GPT and a couple of cases it used for precedent did not actually exist. They were just complete hallucinations. And the judge pointed this out. Well, that exception, you know, doesn't make the rule. You know, that's somebody who just didn't do the job effectively. It's like, when you get an answer, you know, check your answers, <laughs> make sure that it's verifiable somewhere. But I've been very impressed, especially with the legal aspects of, of this. If you have the resources to be able to do that kind of fact checking, it's, it's super helpful, yeah. Yeah, so I'm curious Kayla? to know, are there, is there any other questions in the chat? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I would love, uh, the thing I'd love to see is, and I don't know, uh, Pete, if we were talking about this recently in our group, was kind of like um, a collective login, you know, where everyone's kind of part of the same collaboration, uh, where we can all see the thread of the conversation. So I think it's, one of the first things I, uh, well, I did this a couple of months ago where I wrote kind of a collaboration prompt. It doesn't work though, because there is no group login to chat GPT. But the idea would be that if a group logged in, we could all produce a book very quickly based on a conversation. I, I think that's a really exciting idea. Multiplayer, um, multiplayer chatbot. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, it's one of the things I'd like to work on if, if I get a chance. Um, uh, Lee, you've been super generous with your time, um, and I think we really appreciate it. Uh, this is kind of mind blowing stuff that you've got. So, I, I another odd thing is that there's a there's a difficulty even in kind of demoing it because it's so deep and rich that I I can tell if I were using the EFT bot, for instance, or something like that, I can tell that it would get really deep really fast for me personally, right? 
but it's a, it's a little bit difficult to pick that experience up and show it to a group you know um it's not like uh you know it's, it's not like demoing an image generator or something like that where it's like oh wow look a pretty picture it's a lot more uh you know rich and deep and difficult to difficult to demo yeah it is difficult um it's one of those things where i I still miss getting together with people in, in a real space where you can have a big whiteboard and then maybe you can have your laptop there projecting up on a big screen because I think it's important to see all the component parts that go into something and it's really hard to do. I've got a 16 inch screen here and I'm just thinking, okay, I need to have multiple screens to do this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. It, yeah. And also I think it's um, one of the things that's come out of this conversation for me is I would like to see more teams of people building these products because you're still just one brain interacting and that's your perspective. You know, I want to have multiple perspectives, which is kind of like this anthology that we're doing. This, uh, this book we're writing on AI is yeah. we're getting what five, six, seven people's perspective on what the future is going to be. And we don't, we didn't really know what anyone else was going to be writing about, but we'll find out. And so I think prompt construction shouldn't just be a solo task either. I, I totally agree. I like that perspective. Yeah. Well. Um, so any last all, questions? I was going to say, do people all have holograms at some point in time where we can interact with each other? Like, isn't that... <laughs> <laughs> So instead of by Zoom, we'll just hologram ourselves into a space. It'd be super cool. I'm not sure it would feel the same though. <laughs> I yeah, I don't know. It's um yeah. I, I would like to see some kind of a hybrid system though, where we're, you know, it's part solo, but also part like, all right, let's meet now in person and go over this. Um, yeah, it, are there other questions that came up that I didn't get a chance to answer. Yeah. Any last questions? Um, uh, is there anything that, that the AI one community, we're not, uh, we're a pretty loose net community still. Um, uh, we're still gelling, I think. Uh, AI 101 or AI salon, is there anything that you need help with, Lee? Um, yeah. The one thing to, uh, to remember is, you know, that I've seen it's kind of been absent from, you know, some of the seminar. I, I've attended a couple of these things online and I usually leave in about 10 or 15 minutes because uh, they cover a lot of the basics. But the one thing they don't cover is that you're free to be as curious and imaginative as you want to be. And you have to allow yourself that because it's fun, number one. And it's also, you know, I sit here most of the time where I, where I can't wait to see what the result is going to be for something. Like I've had friends conduct weird experiments, like where they were introducing chat GPT to Claude and like being the bridge between the two systems and seeing if they would get to know each other. And then if they would become like sentient beings or something at some point. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens here. And, you know, my friend said, well, at some point he just got really tired, you know, of being the bridge and like they were, they weren't getting to know each other fast enough, but you know, you can be really experimental because there's no penalty really. I mean, unless you're putting things out there in the public, but it, as long as it's just in private, you can be as curious and imaginative as, as you want to be and just tinker around. Um, I think that's really good advice. Um, uh, I, Ivan asked me a question in back channel. Evan, do you want to just ask Lee or, um, I, I can give an answer too. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, um, you type something to the GGs, uh, the bot GGs about the issue I, that I, I have. really like that answer from the EFT bot. And, uh, he was wondering if you could copy and paste it, uh, maybe put it in chat. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank let you. me, uh, let me see if I can find um, it. And I think the other thing, Ivan, you can go to the bot uh, yourself. I think I put the link in there. Yeah, Dr. Gigi? Dr. Gigi? Yeah. Yep. Not uh, not her website. Um, right. Should I do a... the first response or both responses? Maybe both. I can probably just copy both of them. 
Oh, here it is. Here we go. Yeah, um, here's the, the GPT. Yeah. Here's the link to the bot. The flow GPT. The, uh, po.com. Uh, oh yeah, the message because yeah, yeah. it was too long. <laughs> but you can link to it. I forgot that you can link to it. So what I'll do is I'll just send a link. Or or, awesome. or send me the prompts. I can re. Yes. Yeah. Let me uh, let me see if this works. Um, and as we're wrapping up uh, here with Lee, um, I uh, this was super cool having a, a guest. I, I think I, I would like to do this again. Um, I feel bad that we didn't cover any, like I wonder if anybody has any uh, generic questions about uh, LLMs or image synthesizers that we should hit real quick or queue up for the next call. I think the next call will be on Saturday again. That's, that's working out pretty well for me, Saturday at seven. Uh, Pacific, 10 Eastern. And then we'll have another one during the week, next week too. Yeah, I'll put my contact info in the uh, chat bar in case anyone has follow-up questions. So Awesome. Thanks so much. Let's see. I think I got it. Mm. Uh, Yeah, I, I got it. I got it. Oh, you opened it up and it worked. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yes, it's right oh, cool. there. Nice. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to hear uh, hear how everyone is doing and what kind of progress people are making. So, thanks so much, Lee. Um, my brain is full, and it sounds like we don't have a <laughs> bunch of questions. So maybe this is a good place to kind of wrap up. Does that sound good? Uh, great call. Thank you uh, so much, Lee. I always learn yeah, something when I'm talking to you. Um, I'm always mind blown too. <laughs> so that's really cool. You know, you never know. I never know if this is connecting or not, but it's it's just an interesting place to to be doing work right now. Yeah. Can we add GPTs in there? Can we get add in that uh, in flow uh, new GPTs or how it goes? Uh, you can make your own in Po. Yeah. Yeah. Does do you have to pay for Po, Lee? Uh, there's a uh, like a free Appreciate version. It. I pay for the premium so I can use GPT-4 and, and all the advanced models, but yeah. you can get pretty much everything you need in the free version. And and like, uh, I forget the gentleman's name who was talking about making GPTs. Uh, you can't make those in Poe, even with premium. So I recommend going with GPT+. Plus. I got it. We got it. And that's what I recommend. And but on, then on the flip side, they still have it uh, paid walled for anybody using the the GPT. So, but it, it's good to see a little bit um, a little bit different perspective uh, GPTs um, in the GPT store, and then uh, Poe and Flow GPT. So thanks for that. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. It's good yeah, meeting you. Yeah, it's all good. Thanks all. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.